Okay, guys, it's Sylvia here from Solitronics, and uh, today I wanted to talk about this um, little gadget right here. And uh, this, believe it or not, is an EEPROM, which I built for my uh, transistor tester, um, which I will show in another video. But uh, I'm going to explain this, uh, why I made this, and uh, I'm pretty sure you guys might find it interesting, and maybe, maybe, uh, not so interesting but uh, nevertheless I think it's a pretty cool design and I just wanted to put it out there so um, as you can see here um, it's basically a print circuit board which I printed um, to mount these components and these components are um, as you can see here are resistors uh, these are transistors right here and um, of course resistors on this side to feed transistors and these are DIP switches now the um, each row here represents one byte okay or individually it would be one bit and since there are eight switches that would be eight bits which is equivalent to one byte so um, on the back side you can see if I bring it up closer here Hopefully it'll focus. Uh, you can see that there are diodes. These these are actual diodes. I'm not sure if they're visible here, but right in here are diodes. Okay. These are these are uh, little one uh, N nine one four diodes. And what you see going across the diodes are simply wire. And these wires actually connect from the resistor side and continue all the way down to the data output uh, lines so I'm going to basically just um, tell you exactly what these pins are and uh, then we'll continue from there so starting from the right hand side uh, this pin right here would be B plus this would connect to 5 volts because you can see that the line goes to the top side of the, the resistors on the top here right there okay all these resistors and the other side of these resistors feed the output the data output lines at the bottom here through these wires all right and um, so from the right side this would be this would be the 5 volts uh, this would be transistor number six which is the uh, sorry transistor number one which is the top one the first one which would be this one. So this is transistor number one, two, three, four, five, and six. So from here, this would be B plus um, uh, address control number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then these two would be ground because all the emitters would be grounded from the transistor. So there are two grounds. And then from here, this would be the data output lines. There are eight of them, so which represents one byte. These are the first four, and these are the second four. Now, this one here on this side would be uh, data number seven, because it would be the most uh, significant bit. And the least significant bit would be on the opposite side. So this would be data output seven, data output six, five, four, three, two, one, and data output zero. All right. So now the way this works is this is an EEPROM. Yes, it is an EEPROM and it's programmable, but it's programmable not only by putting the diodes in the place where they're needed. If you can, uh, much, obviously you can't tell from this, but uh, there are diodes in every single position. Okay, every single position, all eight data lines and on every single row. Now, the way you select which diodes go in place and out of place are with the dip switches. So as you can see here, from this angle, you can more or less tell that some switches are flipped and some are not. The ones that are flipped represent zero and the ones that are not flipped represent a one. So in the case of this first row, it would be um, 
zero 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 one zero zero one but since i've only got six output lines the last two are not used okay uh, because uh, i did it wasn't needed so basically you can put this into these two switches in the equation but really they're they're not in circuit at all so uh it's only the first six starting from the right hand side so basically if you go up to six the data output for this first row would be uh would be uh, low low high low low high all right and of course uh that's the trend for every single row so each time the transistor is switched on by the uh, control lines here this sequence of data appears at the data outputs all right and what the beauty of this little circuit is that i can at any time just close uh, open a switch and close it to give me a different data output without having to physically uh, remove the diodes and put them in a different place so if i wanted to start over i could just turn all these switches off okay and they would all be uh high because with the switches all off then the five volts that is on this side of the resistor also appears on the other side of the resistor which go feeds directly to the output through these wires right here through these wires on the back it just jumps from the resistors to this side of the switch 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 and so on until it gets to the output so with all these switches off all the outputs are high which represents basically an EEPROM that has been erased because usually EEPROMs that are erased all all have ones or high output which indicates uh, an erased EEPROM and then by selecting the dip switches um, what you're doing is you're setting up the date the output lines for that sequence of binary data every time that line gets triggered and this line this row these rows in this direction in this direction are triggered by which transistors are activated and the activation of each transistor is controlled by these lines down here because you can see that from the back these these control lines actually go up to each individual transistor through the resistor the base all right and uh, so this is a pretty good uh, little EEPROM that I built to use in my project I built this one to use uh, in my transistor um, tester project um, which I will upload the video of that uh, probably next week and I will show the, how this circuit uh, works in that little project uh, so I wanted to show you guys this and this is another way of building an EEPROM which you can adjust you can actually program this EEPROM but not by software this is actually by hardware so you have to physically uh, set up these switches to get whatever data you want out of these lines um, the the um, the advantage is that you don't have to desolder anything you don't have to desolder any diodes and replace them in a different uh, a different row and column sequence um, you just leave everything as is and it's just a matter of basically turning them off and turning them on and it gives you different data outputs all right so um, now what I want to do is I want to show you the internal diagram of this of this little circuit you, this is the actual circuit that I'm showing you um, that is represented by the diagram I'm about to show you um, so now that you see this so let's see if i can get to my computer screen here because i i have uh, made a schematic diagram of my project including this and i just want to show you because it's pretty hard to tell on here uh, exactly what's what i'm just going to show you on uh, on computer it's a little easier to look at and to understand and one thing about this i wanted to mention also that the um this epon is not made to separate the low order uh, bits from the high order bits in order to select your row and column it doesn't work that way there is there are no column selects on this e on this EEPROM this is just row select so in other words um, whatever data is set on these dip switches 
are the exact data that's going to be coming out every time the row that row is selected okay there is no there are no circuits in here to select columns in other words individual bits cannot be accessed what you're doing is you're accessing the entire row because there is only one transistor that will activate that entire row okay and um, the data output is dependent on which of the switches are grounded or are closed to um, cause a ground condition um, so there you go this is a, se a selectable EEPROM by one byte at a time because it only selects rows not no columns all right so I just wanted to make that clear anyways let's see if I can get to my computer and um, we'll continue from there and maybe it's uh, be a little bit easier to understand um, how I've designed this so let me try and move this without shaking the video too much and uh, we'll continue so just give me one sec here all right thank you okay I think that looks pretty good right there okay let me shut this light off here because it's causing a glare okay so here's the actual diagram of the ROM the internal ROM <clears throat> and as you can see here this is uh, the VCC is feeding all the resistors I told you about and uh, from the top side and these resistors are 470 ohm 1% and uh, <clears throat> here are the diodes okay now these diodes you can see that they're all connected from the data lines in each line that feed directly to the output uh, A to F and A represents the least significant bit and F is the most significant bit and there's a ground the ground will ground out all the emitters of the transistors and you can see that the this side of the circuit right here are your control your data controls which uh, the top transistor would be the first one all the way up to the sixth one and basically the control lines are just a feed to the base of the transistor right here which basically turns it on or turns it off and when it turns it on the collectors of each one are grounded through the emitter to ground but the data output that appears here between a and f is dependent on which of the the, uh, the dip switches are turned on so as you can see from here let me let me see if I can just zoom in a little bit more here okay uh, so as you can see here this this here is a dip switch so before the diode is connected to the collector it actually is connected to one side of the dip switch and the other side is connected to the collector so if the switch is closed then you're basically connecting that diode to the collector but in the case like this this switch is open this diode is not connected to the collector this is also not connected and the rest are all closed switches as you can see here that's closed closed and closed so by producing an EEPROM in this fashion then you can basically very quickly by closing and opening these dip switches can select any kind of data that you need at the output here between A and F and um, so this is the how simple the circuit actually is for this EEPROM but um, and as you saw earlier the actual um, unit to build it was not that simple but uh, nevertheless uh, I managed to um, compress everything as, as, as uh, low as I uh, as small as I could and uh, it came out pretty good and it's actually very functional and it, and it, and it works very very well so my next video I'm going to um, connect that in my transistor circuit and basically show you guys exactly how this uh, works and why I designed it like this and why this pattern of open and close switches are in this uh, position if I go to the top of the diagram here here's a truth table that I made for it and uh, you can see here that this basically is telling you okay look for the um, transistor number one when when it's high in other words when it's on and all the other ones are off uh, 
this is the data that comes out of the output, okay, from uh, A to F. Uh, we get a low, low, high, low, low, high. And if you look here, that's exactly the data that I want because when transistor number one right here is on or it's high, there's a high here, uh, it would be a low, low, high and a low, low, high. When, they, when the switches are open like this, it's a high condition because the, the B plus, for example, this switch right here, the B plus actually coming through the resistor is not being grounded through the transistor. So it basically goes all the way out to the output. So the output will produce a high. And even though these other switches are closed, that is irrelevant because these other transistors are off. So that means that these collectors, these other collectors are floating. All right, so that's basically the same as having an open switch. And that's why it's important that only one transistor at a time gets turned on. You cannot turn on multiple ones at a time. Um, so anyways, uh, here's the truth table. And of course, pre going back to the truth table, of course, uh, when transistor number two is on, the dip switches are wired to give you this output. Number three is this output, number four this output, and so on, all the way down to six. Now, the reason I made only six, um, <clears throat> the reason that I made only six uh, bits and not eight, not a full byte in each row is because I didn't need a full byte. I just needed uh, six bits. And um, <clears throat> because the six bits would control, each, each bit will control... Uh, an analog switch, a 4066 analog switch, and I've got uh, six of them, so in total, and of course I don't need eight bits to control that, I only need six, so that's the reason for the six bits, and I have uh, six rows because the, because to test a transistor, a transistor can be tested in six different ways, and I'm talking about the unipolar, uh, bipolar uh, transistors, and um, such as the 2N2222 and, you know, NPN, PNP, okay? Those transistors can be tested in six different ways. And that's the purpose of having six different transistors. And the six um, bits across in each row <coughs> is, um, is necessary to control the... 40, 66 bilateral switches in order to um, switch the transistors and the orientation required for it to be tested. And I know that's probably kind of hard to understand, but uh, the, in my next video, when I continue with this, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. And um, anyways, until then, guys, we'll see you later. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up. Um, give a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, uh, please... Uh, um, how do you say it, uh, not register, uh, what's the word there, subscribe, okay, and uh, very appreciated, and uh, I will continue these videos, this is part, this circuit here is part of the, my total, uh, my complete uh, transistor tester, which, let me reduce the size here to 100%, so you can see it, all right, here's the entire circuit right here, what I've showed you so far was this side right here, which is the the EEPROM, all right? And, um, and these are all truth tables for all the different um, situations that this tester goes through. And, of course, the rest of it are the control logic here, the 4066, which is controlled by the EEPROM. <clears throat> and then the uh, the, uh, the D latches, which uh, hold on to the uh, output signals, um, and this is all the control logic for the um, uh, for the, uh, the the circuit here to control. Okay, all the decoders and the clock circuits and everything else, it's all here. So I will show you the complete unit. This is the actual diagram. Uh, and uh, which I wrote on my paint program and stored it on my computer, which is easily accessible other than going through paperwork. Uh, it's much easier this way. So, and uh, anyways, um, so I've only shown you one section of it, which is this little EEPROM card right here that I just showed you today. And from here, I will continue. So 
I'm going to physically pop this back into the circuit for my next video and I will show you my tester in action, okay? And by the way, I am using an Arduino Nano to um, uh, to uh, take the uh, signals coming from the circuit and, and uh, show it on the serial monitor on my computer. So you'll see that as well and you'll see what the out, uh, output shows when I connect different components in my tester. and. Um, so it's uh, easily visible on screen and uh, you'll be able to tell what's going on from there. All right, guys. So until next time, uh, have a good one and uh, we'll catch you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.